Hey everyone, it's Bethany. Welcome back. In this video, it is an exciting day because Simon Says Stamp has another new release out today. Their new release today is called Beautiful Days and I have just a few of the things from their release and I'm excited to show you what I have. Of course, there are more products that have come out so be sure to check out all the new goodies that they are releasing today. Simon Says Stamp did send me some of these things so that I can play around with them and help you be inspired with them as well. So I'm excited to get some cards made for you today and inspire you along the way. So the first thing that I have here is this leafy sprig die. It is so cute. Look at this little die. Isn't that fun? I love stuff like this because I feel like you can use it all year long. No matter what you do with it, you can make it look different by just mixing up your colored cardstock. So I love stuff like this because I feel like it's not something that you're just going to use once. I feel like you can bring it out time and time again and use it in a variety of ways. Another item that just was released today are these everyday acetate sheets. These are really, really neat. So we have, and I cut off off one because I'll show you a card I did with one um, earlier but we have two different types of sentiments here and let's see if we can see that'll be a little bit easier so you have two sheets of each and we have a, just a fun little variety of sentiments and they are a big big variety so we have some sympathy ones we have a happy birthday we have just kind of generic ones like hugs and kisses we have your kindness is appreciated sending love we have happiest wishes i love stuff like this because it's very universal it's not just dependent on one type of card so these are super super fun and nice to have in your craft space Okay, I can't wait to show you the stamps because they are so super cute. So let's check those out. The stamps that they sent over, this one is called Garden Fresh. Isn't this beautiful? So fun. I've already played around with this little watering can. It was so fun. I just really needed some quiet time to color. So I'll show you that card a little bit later, but I am inspired by this. Aren't these pretty? So many things I love about this, right? I love these jars and I love the little shapes of the flowers. I think they are so fun. I also am just giddy over the sentiments and I love the little combination of fonts that they have going on here. I love this beautiful script font. It's so pretty and all of the sentiments are just beautiful. Wishing you joy and happiness on your birthday enjoy the beautiful days of spring. I love that because it's, that's just kind of an everyday anything card, right? And then thinking of you today and always, I love birthday greetings, or you could just do birthday and pair it with this happy. We have welcome spring, we have hello, you, which you could do on your own, or you could do hello spring, which is really fun as well. Showering you with well wishes and wishing you the best this season has to offer snuck over here we have you're always on my mind I think this is so fun so very beautiful stamp set really grateful to have this because I think that there are so many things that can be done with this another thing that they sent me that I'm super excited about because I'm always looking to organize just a tad more in my craft space are these positively everything cardstock sleeves and these look very neat they are sized at six and three quarters by nine and a half inches. I'm gonna open these up because I'm really inspired with the size of this. I feel like this could be really great for your scrap cardstock or things that you trim off. But also, I feel like there are some specialty cardstocks that I buy in the A2 size. Like I love Tim Holtz's watercolor paper. And I feel like I have little packs here and there of all these little different types of paper. And I love the idea of putting those little pieces in here and then maybe putting a label right here where there's this little um, opening here. So that would be really nice and you can stack them, put them in a little container, but these are beautiful and I can't wait to get organized with some of these beautiful pockets. Okay, let's put some of these things away. I want to focus first on the stamp set. So let's go ahead and grab the Misty and some inks. I am inspired to do a very simple card. So if you're in the mood for a card that doesn't take a lot of time, but is really pretty, then I'm going to show you a really fun technique that you might want to keep in mind because you can do this with any stamp set that you have. 
Okay, so I have my Misty out, I have my stamp set. For the cards today, I really am going to be intentional about showing you cards that are simple but really beautiful. Sometimes we just need to put together some simple cards or sometimes we're just in the mood for doing something that's a little bit easier, less fussy, but equally beautiful. So I feel like on my channel, I have a lot of cards that take quite a bit of time, but I really enjoy doing that. I love that slowdown of having to really focus for an extended amount of time, though I know sometimes we just really need to get a quick card out. Okay, so that is the focus for today. Really quickly, I'm going to grab a little A2 size panel. A2 is sized at four and a quarter by five and a half, and this is just 80 pound cardstock. I really wanna focus on this beautiful trio here. And then I pulled some inks to bring in some color. So my favorite is Concord and Ninth inks. I think they are amazing. So I brought in some ballet slipper. I also love Simon Says inks. So I have a little combination of both with some of my favorite colors. So I have Concord and Ninth's um, ballet slipper. I have Simon Says stamps melon. Then we have Buttercup by Concord and Ninth, Sprout and Sea Glass. So this is where I wanna go in terms of color. And I want to do my best to get five of the little jars. Of course, you only see three here, but we'll do two of them twice. Okay, so I'm just gonna set these all up here and I'm going to pull the first stamp. So let's go ahead and just pull this one. Now I am going to turn my Misty and I think I'll place the first one right about here. I think that'll be really nice. Give myself some room. Okay, I think that looks good. So let me just close the door. Okay. And then really quickly, because I just opened my stamps, I'm going to just condition the stamps. That is just going to remove a little bit of the coating that is on the stamp from being created. And it just helps the first stamp be really nice and even and successful. So I like to do that before I start. Okay, the first color is going to be this ballet slipper. This is a really pretty color. and press that down. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and stamp that one more time. It is a little bit light, but if you stamp it twice, you get a really nice pink. But I really also do like that color. In fact, I actually might stamp this three times. I feel like three, let's see, I can't remember if it's two or three for this particular color. You eventually just kind of get to know your favorites and how many you need to do. I'm going to do just one more on that. Aren't these colors pretty? I feel like they are just so spring. Okay. I think it's, I think it's three. Yes, there we go. Okay. I love that. It's more of a, um, well, ballet slipper, right? I just, I just love that color. Okay, let's go ahead and clean this stamp off. Okay, and grab our next one. So I think I'll just kind of go in order. I'm not going to overly complicate it. We will just head to the next one. Okay, so grab this and once more, I'm gonna move it like this for a moment just to get positioned. And I want to overlap them. I think that would be really pretty. Okay, I think that positioning looks good. Okay. And it doesn't need to be perfect. We're just having fun. But I like the little overlap. I think that'll be really nice. Okay, I'm gonna bring in Melon. I love this color. You know, well, you might not know if this is the first time you've watched my channel, but I am not an orange girl. I just don't like orange, but I do like like a sherbet color. Just a really gentle orange. And I feel like melon is that for me. Okay. Isn't that pretty? Goodness gracious. I love it so much. 
Okay, I'm not going to double stamp that. I feel like it got, well, let me just do one more. Um, I don't wanna, but I don't wanna make it too dark because I, again, I have a fear of orange for some reason, but maybe I'll just lightly. Okay, there we go. We're gonna leave that. Now I'm going to grab my next stamp. So see how quick and easy this can be? And it's just about bringing in the colors that you really like. Now I'm focusing kind of on a little rainbow, obviously, but I'm focusing on some spring things. Let me grab the stamp. And I like the little color combination just because with these stamps feeling all spring, I wanted my colors to be all spring. Okay. Oh, I love how that looks so far. Isn't that pretty? Okay. Let's go ahead and place the next one down again, doing a little bit of an overlap. Now you could bring in some masking magic or you could mask off and do all of the masking if you didn't want these to overlap like that. But I intentionally want it to look like that. That's, that's my goal here. That's exactly the look I am going for. Okay, I like how that looks. going to also just double check that we are in position. Okay, let's just prep that stamp. Doesn't take much. These are stamping out so beautifully. Okay, these little ones over here. Okay, so this is the final one in this trio. And this is Buttercup. Okay. Perfect. I'm going to do that one and done actually, because I don't want to darken that up anymore. And honestly, that was a great impression. Okay. So clean that off. Now I think just because I visually think it'll look better. I think I'm going to go right back to this short one once more, and then I'll do the final one again. So for our fourth, we'll do number four and number five, if that makes sense, but you'll see it play out. Okay, let's put this one back. Bring in number four. And it's just easier for me this way to line these up. There we go. Okay, done with the buttercup. Let's do sprout. Okay. Actually, I already, already conditioned that. See, now I'm, I'm kind of in a mode. Okay, sprout, such a fun color. Pretty. In fact, I'm gonna just one and done that as well. I love how that's stamped out. And again, sometimes I just want the true color. I don't want to, um, you know, darken it up any more than it is because I like that tone. So if you wanted to, you know, get a darker tone, then that's when you just continue layering up. Okay, Sprout is done. And again, we will go back to that first stamp for our very last one. Holy guacamole, my lineup was perfect. Well, I'm trying not to say perfect, but look how even that is on the side. I thought I was gonna be a little off. Okay, so it looked like I overlapped probably about a quarter of an inch or a little less. Okay. Looks good. And always reposition your paper, especially if you intend on double stamping. Okay. And then this color is sea glass. It's one of my favorite colors. I've been using this color a lot lately. Okay, let's make sure that this, I'll put this bar down here. Okay, we clear that. Look at this combo of colors. If that doesn't make you swoon. Okay, pretty. Just a little bit more. 
pretty, pretty, pretty. I'm actually going to give that last one just one more light layer, ever so light, just to even it out just a little bit. Okay, so I think that that looks good. Okay, so this is our final beautiful panel. Isn't that pretty? Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and get my A2 layer dies out and I'm going to trim this down further and then we're gonna focus on the sentiment. Okay, bringing in my A2 layer die set and as always, I'll link everything that I'm using down below. I think I'm gonna go couple in. Oh yes, I think that that will be pretty. Okay, so let's go ahead and bring in some tape. So I'm just going to tape this down and then I will run this through my die cut machine. Okay, so I have my panel trimmed down. I'm also going to decide on a sentiment. And I also grabbed my sentiment dies that I have in my collection from Simon Says Stamp. So I was thinking wishing you the best this season has to offer. I think that's just so pretty. So I'm going to go ahead and grab that. And I was looking and it seems as if I could use this to trim that out. I think that will be just fine. So I'm going to grab another piece of cardstock and I'm wondering if I should do, hmm, I'm wondering if I should do it on maybe some colored cardstock, if that would be really pretty and maybe heat emboss in white. I'm not sure what I want to do. You know what I think will be pretty is if I do it on a nice craft cardstock. So I pulled that because I think it'll be nice and soft and pair well with just the whole thing I've got going on there. Okay, which way? I need a nice right angle. <laughs> okay, I think that'll be good. So let me grab my embossing powder, or I'm sorry, my anti-static powder. Okay. And oops, I should have positioned this before, you know what, I'll just position it over here. That way my stamp doesn't get all powdery. Let's see if that works. Yep, I'm gonna I might bring it up just a little bit. There we go. Let's see, yep. Okay, grabbing Versamark and stamp that down. I think this will be really pretty. It's not usually my go-to. So that's why I kind of think it'll be fun. Oh, that's nice. You can really see it when it's on a dark cardstock or really anything other than white. <laughs> you can really see. Okay, let me grab my embossing powder. Beautiful. Okay, bringing a little catch paper in, a little paper clip. And I have Fine Detail White Embossing Powder by Simon Says Stamp. I really like it. Make sure I tap that all off and it looks great. It's ready to heat up. Okay, I'm gonna put my extra right back into a little container. Okay, now when doing your embossing powder and getting it all melted, you really wanna let your heat tool heat all the way up before you start melting your powder. That way you're not applying heat to your paper longer than necessary when you're waiting for your tool to heat up. So go ahead and just let it heat up for a little bit and then you can melt your powder. There we go. I think that looks really nice. Okay, so now I have these little dies for the sentiments. So I can cut out that much and then we can run it back through on the other side and I'll show you how to do that. Tape here, tape that down and run that through my die cut machine. Okay, <laughs> good game right out there. Now what I'll do is I will just turn this over, move my tape so I can see. I'm going to turn this over and just position it on the other side. You can also just take it to a paper trimmer and trim that off. But if you wanted that nice rounded, you know, pressed edge, 
to be consistent all the way around, then I'll just do this. Okay, so that looks good to me. So now I'm just gonna tape that. Then you can see on the back how it's just, whoops. Oh goodness, I have to reposition that, hold on. All right, turn you around, line you up, but you'll see on the back it just nestles right in there so it's not gonna recut anything. Okay, so then you'll see on the back how it's just right on in there. You know what, this is being so tricky for me today. I'm gonna grab my paper trimmer. I always am able to get that to nestle right back in to cut out on the other side, but today it's just not going my way and I want to, again, be quick with my cards today. Okay, so I'm just gonna put that in there. That looks good. There we go. Okay, so then I have my little sentiment. Isn't that cute? I think that's really fun. All right, now let's put this on the front of our card. Oh, that's so sweet. It's so soft and I really think it, it's so, so spring, right? Okay, let's go ahead and prep our card base. I have a piece of paper here at eight and a half by five and a half. Half of eight and a half would be four and a quarter. So I will place my score mark there. I always have to think through because I usually do top folding cards. And today I'm doing it a little different. Okay. Okay, so now I have my foam tape right on the back there using my non-stick scissors, which I did not know I needed so badly until I got a pair. They are one of the best things that I grab for when card making. Okay, I'm gonna open up my card base and just magnet that down for a moment and get that going the right way. Let's center this and place it right down. How pretty and fresh is that? It's just simple and fresh and the color is where it's all at for this card. Okay, I'm gonna grab some tiny little adhesive squares right for the back of this and we'll just pop this up and this will be a finished card okay there we go I'm gonna grab some tweezers because I find that to be helpful keeping my fingers out of the visual way when placing Okay, so I'm thinking right there. Yep, I really like that. Okay, now what I think I'll do is bring in, I love these, I'm gonna bring in these little dew drops because they are so subtle and just barely there. Whoops, that's the wrong side. But they offer something that you just didn't realize your card needed until you put them on. They are just one of my favorite final touches. So you can skip this, but I'm gonna go ahead and just place just a couple. So I think I'm going to kind of nuzzle two down here under my sentiment. And then let's see here, get the size that I want. And again, they are so soft, so subtle but I feel like they just do a little something to make the card that much better. Okay, and then finally we have last one here and the last one there. Okay, so that is card number one. So quick, so easy. I think that's so pretty. It's just nice, it's soft. The final little dew drops really aid in that softness and I really like the final look. So very easy, very relaxing, and very, very simple to do. I love it, and I think that this is a fun little technique that you can do with any stamp set that you have. Just grab some ink pads and layer up your stamps and just have a single little panel card. Very cute. For the next card, I wanna play around with this really fun leafy sprig die. So what I did was I grabbed a variety of colors. These are all Concord and Ninth cardstock colors. It's my favorite cardstock. And I just went ahead and die cut a little variety out. Now, I have a panel here. And what I wanna do is I want to bring in my paper trimmer 
and quickly just trim this panel down. Now, in the first card, I used my little A2 layer dies, but lately I have just been grabbing a paper trimmer when I'm starting out a card. Sometimes I like the dies for when you already have a design on the card like you saw in my first card and then you really wanna frame it down because then you're centering your die around something and you can visually see. But when I'm starting out with a little trim down panel, grabbing a paper trimmer is so easy. Okay, so what I wanna do is keep this again really simple but beautiful. So I thought what we could do is I'm thinking of bringing in these beautiful little sprigs. Sorry, I'm focusing for a second. And I'm just gonna have them cascade down the side of this card, keeping it super simple. And I'm wondering if I shouldn't, I think I'm going to, I think I'm gonna trim this panel down just just a hair more. Yep, I want to just trim that down just a hair more. So what I'll do is trim that. My final measurements will be three and three quarters by five. And I think that will be perfect. Okay, now I'm going to just reposition. Ooh, that little panel danced a little bit. I'm gonna reposition those just to get an idea because, in fact, let me grab my Misty because the next thing I wanna do is I'm gonna stamp a sentiment directly onto my little panel. Oh, I found my mini Misty. It was hiding from me. You saw me use my larger one for the first card, but I love my small one, especially when filming because it's just easier to fit within frame. So my beloved mini Misty is back. Okay, there that is, and I'm going to really quickly just eyeball this for where I kind of want things to go because I want to see shape wise how I want to do my sentiment okay that is pretty let's grab the stamps because I'm thinking we could either do welcome spring I don't know I'm kind of liking the enjoy the beautiful days of spring I really like that Yep, it's just nice and simple. Enjoy the beautiful days of spring. It's one little stamp. And I think if we do it right here, that will be stunning. Okay, so that is gonna be my final little answer. Take these off. And there we go. Let me grab some Memento ink. You can use black ink of your choice. You can also use a colored ink. Condition this stamp because this is the first spin we're going to take this one. And let's ink this up. Okay. Oh my goodness. Well, hold on. Hold on. Nope. I'm going to do it one more time. I thought it was perfect, but it's just a little shallow on the bottom. And there we go. That looks really nice. Let's clean this off. And now we can arrange our pretty, pretty little sprigs. Before that, I'm going to do my card base. And again, 110 pound cardstock. This time I'm gonna do a top folding card. So this is 11 by four and a quarter. And my score mark will be centered at five and a half. And there is our top folding A2 card. One thing I really love about this card is that it is a scrap cardstock buster. You don't need a lot of paper. You can go through your little scrap bin, grab some colors, and you can really, you know, repurpose them. I love that. I love that. Sometimes we are trying to find bigger pieces all the time, and this is a wonderful way to repetitively grab some smaller pieces. Okay, foam tape is on the back. Let's place our panel down because I'm hoping that some of my sprigs will kind of fall off the side 
think that'll be really pretty and interact with the card. So I kind of want it to all be put down once it's on the full card because again, okay, now that you can visually see what I'm saying, I want to have these kind of fall off and interact with that card base. Okay, so I am going to grab my glue and I had to think where that was. And I'm going to focus on placing glue. You want enough, right? Because you don't want it to fall off. So I think if you put glue on the little stem here and also the first leaf, that is going to be plenty. And you can glue the whole thing down if you'd like. But, there we go. But I want, um, oh, I think that's really pretty. I want it to have movement. Okay, then I'm going to bring this up there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oops, I'm going to do it this way. And again, that first leaf and the stem. And we're golden. We are golden. I think I'm going to bring it up like this. Perfect. Okay. That looks really nice. And then, let's see, I'm trying to think of my color order. <laughs> I have to do it backwards. Right there. And we have one more. Isn't that pretty? And so simple. It really is. This card really didn't take me any time at all. The um, most time you're going to spend is probably cutting out your leaves. But honestly, if you just get all of your paper all ready to go, you can just zoom through the die cutting process really quickly. Okay. The last one I'm going to do, I'm going to kind of focus so that it's kind of coming right out of that corner. See how that kind of comes out of that corner? I think that'll look nice. Okay, and I'll press that down. And then, let's add a couple little dew drops, as always. Okay, let's see what we can find. I want to do something down here by this sentiment. And then I'm going to come right up here. And I think that is exactly what is going to finish off this card just so beautifully. Okay, I'm going to do one more right there. Oh, I'm going to do that actually. Yeah, okay. Let's go ahead and glue. Okay, final little bit. And the last little one. There we go. Oh my goodness. That actually was quicker than my first card. So pretty. I love it. So there is another idea for a fun, fun little card that is quick and easy, but so pretty. And I love those sprigs. Aren't they pretty? Can't you imagine in the fall doing something with fall colors? And then maybe in the winter, just changing out the color of cardstock to fit the season that you're in. I think this is gorgeous. Okay, so here are the two cards we did today. Aren't they so fun? They just have all the spring feels. Okay, and then I did do a third card. And this is where I brought in those little sentiments that I showed you earlier. Isn't this cool? So I really wanted just to spend some time being still and quiet with my Copics. And I did some Copic coloring. I stamped the beautiful image right onto the card panel. I don't have the coordinating dies and I didn't want to fussy cut something like this out. So I kept it really simple and I put it right on the panel, put a little sentiment strip. Again, that's another way you can make cards very quickly is you have those pre-done sentiments. You just trim them out, put them on your card. Now I actually put mine on a piece of cardstock and and then I put foam tape on it only because they were clear, right? They're acetate. So you would see through them and I really wanted it to be white. I didn't want to see the 
um, color of the watering can. So that's just personal preference, but you can go ahead and use them in any way that you want. Okay, so there are three card ideas that you can make very quickly, but that are so fun, so colorful, and equally as beautiful as the cards that take quite a bit of time. All right, everyone, I hope this was helpful and inspiring to you. I hope you learned something new or were inspired to grab a stamp set that you have, or if you fell in love with this, be sure to grab it because it just came out today. I'll be placing links to all of these new products, but again, be sure that you check out all of the new things that came out in their new release today. And as always, please be sure to give this a thumbs up if you enjoyed watching, and I cannot wait to continue crafting with you in the next video.